God versus the aliens. That's where we're at. God versus the aliens. Common thing I heard from Matt Dillahunty yesterday. You know, I, you say evidence for God's existence. Millions of people believe in God. And he'll say, and I heard him say this out of his own mouth, there are millions of people who believe in alien abduction. You can find books written on the subject where people believe they were carried away by aliens and they believe they've interacted with aliens in their daily life. And then he asked this group of people, and it was really, really dramatic, really proved, underscoring his point. Anybody here believe in aliens? Nobody raised their hand. Ha ha ha. Look how ridiculous. It's just quite the same thing as Christianity or, or belief in God. Well, the reason why I bring it up is because the, the analogy itself, ironically, actually really lends itself to believing in God rather than showing you, rather than underscoring how ridiculous belief in God is. That's the idea behind the analogy. Let me marginalize belief in God and put it in the category of cuckoo clock along with belief in aliens. None of you believe in aliens. You know, and everybody in the room is like, arr, 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 no, we don't believe in aliens, blah, blah, blah. He's like, why not? You can read a book. You can go read books about people who've been abducted by aliens, who've had contact with aliens. Never understanding that the availability of that evidence is minuscule in relation to the whole. Yeah, you can read books by people who say they've contacted aliens or been abducted by aliens or, or really believe in aliens. But those books are still relatively rare. Rare to the point of, you know, very, very, very rare. Now, let's take the country that we live in right now. And let's, let's use the same analogy. Last night in the Oscars. Oscars. Three people mentioned belief in God, faith in God, as something that powerfully motivated them to get to where they got. At least. I didn't even watch the Oscars. And I just sort of know that because I heard a little bit here and there. I could be, it could be more. It could be less. Okay. Every time you watch a football game, two people are going to say, you know, it's God who, to God be all the glory. It's God who got me here. God who gave me the strength to do this. Two people, at least, every single football game you ever watch. That's a little bit more common than alien abduction, isn't it? And if you stretch, you stretch out the analogy, in every town in this country, any, anywhere you live right now, you can go to the nearest Starbucks and you will find two people at least, at least, you can do this today, who believe in God. How many alien abductees are you going to find? I mean, that's, this is part of why we say that atheists, why I say to atheists, you are complicit in your not knowing. And they pretend like that's not, that, that I'm not really getting them with that. Let me say this again. If you are an atheist, listen clearly. You are complicit in your not knowing. There is something inside of you that doesn't want to know. That's what that means. Because the evidence of God's existence is readily available to you. In your own life, in your own town, amongst the circle of people you call friends and family, at least 30% of them will give you, will, will say they believe in God, and if you really ask them, they will tell you why, and those reasons will make absolute sense to you. They will tell you about experiences they have that they can't explain, where, you know, one day I was walking and I saw this kid and I just had this overwhelming feeling that... This all made, you know, they will explain spiritual experiences to you. I'm not talking about Christians. I'm not talking about, you know, fundamentalist people who that's what they're recognized for in our culture. I'm not talking about Joel Osteen, a recognizable voice of, you know, Christianity. I'm talking about everyday people, common people. I'm not necessarily saying they're Christians. I'm just saying they believe in God. Why? Because they all have perfectly valid, reasonable re reasonable. They have come to perfectly reasonable conclusions about God's existence based on their experience. Apply that analogy to aliens. If two people had mentioned aliens last night in the Oscars, if, if every time I watched a football game, three people said, when the aliens showed me who to become, I started becoming a better football player. When, it, when it was my experience with the aliens that made me a better football player. If that was a common occurrence, 
Keep in mind, I am talking about the country we live in. A hundred percent, what I am telling you is the reality of the world you live in. People declaring their faith and their belief in God and how God gave them the, the, the power to be where they're at is a common everyday occurrence in the United States of America. It is not something that happens rarely. It's not something that happens, it, and I'm not talking about the super religious ones. I'm not talking about Tim Tebow's. I'm talking about Denzel Washington. Perfectly normal, excellent actor. I don't know if he's a hardcore Christian or he's just kind of a Christian or he just kind of believes in God, but he believes in God. And he's mentioned it numerous times. Now that's an everyday person, prominent person in our culture. Every single president we've ever had mentions God. Let's forget the, the current occupant in the White House. Belief in God is, is as common as grass. It is not some out there weird thing like belief in aliens. If belief in aliens were as common as belief in, in God, I would believe in aliens. I would. I would never have seen aliens, but my position on aliens would be very different than my position is now. Right now, it's my position is agnostic on aliens. I don't know. They could be there. It's reasonable to think that you know, given how many planets and stars and solar systems are out there in the galaxies, you know, the vastness of space, it's reasonable to think there could be life on another planet. And if I ever had, ever had evidence of it, I would start to believe it. Now, you atheists take the same position on God. If I ever had evidence, so oh, if there was ever any evidence of God, I would believe it. <laughs> and I'm telling you right now, you are discounting reams and reams and reams and reams and reams and reams of evidence, and you are just discounting it. Take the analogy of aliens, okay? I'm agnostic on aliens. If last night Denzel Washington mentioned aliens, and two other people mentioned aliens in the speeches they gave, I would think... Okay, I've never seen an alien. If every single football, every time I watch a football game, somebody said, you know, it's really my experience with aliens that has enabled me to get, have the strength to, to be this great of a champion. Think about it. To really make the analogy with aliens. If 30% of everybody you knew believed in aliens, wouldn't you take the reality of the possibility that they might exist a lot more seriously? I would. I'd look a lot closer. And I'm giving you a very conservative estimate of how many people are believers versus non-believers. There are estimates as high as 80%. I'm not talking about specifically Christians. I'm just talking about I believe in God versus God doesn't exist. I'm giving you the most conservative estimate imaginable on believers versus non-believers. I'm, I'm saying 30%. It's more like 70%. If 70% of everybody you knew believed in aliens to one degree or another, wouldn't you investigate it a lot more seriously? Wouldn't you take the, 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 the possibility of their reality a lot more to heart? I would. But that's just me. I'm reasonable. That's a reasonable position based on the evidence available to you. And, you know, I haven't even started giving you evidence from, from all the books that have been written. Not the books on religion, all the fictional works that have ever been written. How many testimonies to God's glory are, are buried in those pages? Overwhelming. Make the analogy between aliens. Before I became a Christian, okay? I've said this before, but I will say it again. It bears repeating. I believe what my becoming a Christian that Jesus Christ himself using the Holy Spirit of God made the Holy Spirit of God made Jesus real to me and and bore witness in my heart that it was in fact true. Now that totally shook me up and I believe that was a supernatural occurrence. But prior to that day I was 26 27 years old and thinking about God and looking for God and, and I'm technically still an agnostic, but I was relatively convinced that there was such a thing as God. I was pretty sure that God existed. And that was only based on the evidence. That was only based on the evidence of the, cu the culture I lived in. And part of that was talking to a lot of different people and being amazed at how many people actually believed in God. 
once I started bringing the subject up, I found out even in my group of secular friends, more often than not, people go, yeah, I believe in God. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> and they'll have some sort of weird spiritual experience that they tell me that they can never explain. So they believe in God. Go, go ask. Get outside your circle of atheist friends and go ask of just the general people you know. You'll get a lot more, more belief in God responses than you thought. Belief in God is a lot more common than you realize because your friends, your atheist friends, are, are, you guys are perpetrating a snow job on yourselves. You're complicit and you're not knowing. You live in a bubble and you interact with each other to reinforce that bubble. Okay? I lived in the same bubble. I knew mostly secular people. But when I started looking for God and I started asking the people around me, I was amazed at how many more people were... were even Christians or religious than I had ever noticed before. You know, at college, all of a sudden I noticed one of her roommates was Catholic. Didn't know that. Didn't even notice. Been going, hanging out in their apartment every Saturday, hung over for like three years. Didn't even notice that one of them was a Catholic. Didn't even notice. Every other one of them, kind of secular, but believed in God. And would, t and would back it up and tell me why. Once you start paying attention to it, the evidence of God is overwhelming. It's overwhelming. That's why it's absurd to say, once you, you know, if you actually look, if you actually investigate, I promise you this is true, atheists. You are complicit in your not knowing. You do not want to know. If you actually investigate, and you don't have to investigate the hardcore believers, like the, the you know, the really committed Christians or the really committed Islamics, God help us, because they won't help necessarily. Ask the everyday people who kind of believe in God. Because they're usually better, better, representation, better representation of the mystery. Because they don't pretend to know. But then you ask them, why do you kind of believe in God? And they'll give you an experience. An honest experience. This happened to me a lot. Honest experience from their life where they can't explain it, where they just felt this overwhelming peace when they walked into this church, or they just felt this overwhelming sense that, you know, there was some order and rightness to the universe. Overwhelmingly powerful experience that they would describe as spiritual, and that's the only way they could describe it. If, if, if I could meet people who had that, that easily, who had contact with aliens... If I could very easily right now walk down the street and meet three people who met aliens, I would I almost promise you aliens would be real. Because nobody would make no nobody who has an agenda would make it up. So you interact with two people. You interact with two people, both of whom have an agenda. The committed atheist and the committed believer. Now I'm in the camp of the committed believer. But what I'm telling you is the truth. Most committed believers have an agenda. Most committed atheists have an agenda. Go ask someone who's got no dog in the fight. Go. You got five people you know who kind of believe in God. Go ask them. Why? It will make a powerful impression on you that you will not be able to shake. And in that powerful impression, you will understand why you can't shake it is because it's more likely than not true. I promise you. Take me up on that. Check it out. Don't ask, you know, Mr. Mr. Fundamentalist, because he's got an agenda. Don't ask Mrs. Atheist, because she's got an agenda. Ask, you know, the busboy or the, the, the guy who runs the library who you're not even sure what religion he is, and maybe he doesn't have a declared religion, but he believes in God. He'll say, like, hey, God bless you. Ask him why he believes in God. He'll tell you. He'll give you an experience. And that experience will be 100% real. He's got no dog in the fight. I met people like that every single day when I was looking for God. Every single day. They are commonly available to you. They are not extraordinary claims requiring extraordinary proof. They are common claims readily available to you. All you got to do is check it out. Promise you that's true, people. I promise you what I just told you is true, and I think you're sensible enough to understand that what I just told you is the God's honest truth, because it really obviously is. Go check it out.